Welcome back. How did you get on with the last challenge? Hopefully you created something that just looks sick. I'm sure you did. I believe in you. Uh, let me know in the comments. How exactly did it go? Anyway, we're now moving on from modeling and we're going to get on to creating materials first of all. And as we step up in complexity with that, we'll also get on to UV mapping. But in this step, it's going to be all about creating and applying our first material and also just get into grips with a new part of the workspace which is known as the hypershade. To be able to create new materials then we need to get into the hypershade. There are two ways of doing that that I know of although I'm sure there are lots more. You can go into windows, rendering editors and you've got the option for the hypershade there or the way I always get it is I just go to this icon here and give it a click. This then opens up your hypershade. I'm going to make it full screen just so that what you have to look at isn't too confusing. And this is the central working area of Maya where you can build shading networks, which are basically your materials by creating, editing and connecting different nodes, such as textures, materials, lights, etc. You can see that it's split up into different sections known as panels. And I'll just give you a brief overview of what each panel is. So currently across the top here, this is known as the browser. And this just lists the materials, textures, lights that you have in your scene. And there are tabs up here so that you can move between the different types. Over in the top right, you have your material viewer. And if you click on a material, for instance, Lambert one, it will preview what that material looks like on a shape. By default, it will be this handsome thing here called the shader ball, although you can change it to something else. Over on the left here, we have the create tab. This lists all the different nodes that you can create and use to build your materials. This big space here is the work area, and this is where you can see all the nodes, how they're connected, make new connections. It all is represented visually here. And in the bottom right, you've also got a property editor, and this allows you to change the properties of whatever you currently have selected in the hypershade. There's also one other little thing down here in the bottom left of your screen which is bins and all that does is allows you to organize and track the shading nodes in your scenes you can sort them into different bins although it's not something i use so that's the basic overview i because i'm working on one screen rather than working over two as i would normally do i'm also going to open and add one more panel to this to make it a little bit easier to work in and that's going to be a copy of our viewport to do that, I'm going to go up to Window and I can create a viewport. Also, if you ever lose any of your panels, you can just reopen it by selecting on the option in here. Anyway, I want a viewport, so I'll click on that. You'll see that it opens it as a floating window. And if you drag it around, you will see the interface move around, showing you where you can dock this. And you can dock it wherever you choose. But I find that I don't need quite as much space for my browser. So I tend to put it to this side of the browser. And then I just resize it so that I get a bit more of a rectangular view that matches what I would have in my main view. Like that. And that's just lovely. So I would recommend adding your own viewport. And then just put your mouse in here and press 5. And you'll get the same shaded view as you get in your main Maya workspace. What we'll do now then is create our first very simple material. We're just going to add what's called a Lambert. You can see we have Lambert 1 here. This is that default gray material that's applied to everything. And we're going to create a new Lambert that we can just change the color of. My advice to you is never change Lambert 1. Any changes you make to Lambert 1, as you can see here, happen to everything. Generally, that's not something you want to do. So what we'll do is create new materials and apply them. So over in our Create panel over here you can see that there's the option to create a Lambert so I'm going to click on that just the once a new Lambert is created up here it's Lambert 2 we can see the nodes that make up this Lambert here in our workspace and over here we can adjust the properties for it the first thing I will adjust is name so I'm going to call it M underscore and then give it a name so in this case I'll call it floor and then I will press enter to make sure that that name is saved. Now I can change the properties of it. There aren't many properties for this. It's pretty much the most simple type of material in Maya. All I want to change is the color. So you can change the color to black or white using this slider. Or if you want something a bit more extravagant than something between black or white, you can click on the swatch here and choose whichever color you want. So I'm going to go for something that's kind of brown 
browny colored so I'm going to go for red and then I'm going to take this round into sort of the orange orangey spectrum and then from here I'm going to drop this down towards black and that'll give me a dark brown which is what I'm going for that's it you've created your first material the last thing I'll show you is how to apply it and you must make sure that you press the right button for this to work so over here this is our complete material and I'm going to click and drag that onto the floor over here and I'm going to do that using the middle mouse button if you use the left mouse button or the right mouse button it won't work it has to be the middle mouse button so click with the middle mouse button drag over here release on the floor there we go we now have added a little bit of color into our scene and that will wrap up this first step so we've created our first material we actually replace it later I just wanted to start with Lambert so that you know they exist going forward into the next step we're going to create our first Arnold material and explain what that means in the next step so I'll see you there Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends if you'd like to offer your support then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.